Okay guys, we've made it over here now to the CNC Machining Center and we're set up and running these ramrod retaining blocks. And you can see I've got some parts set out on the workbench here. And what we've done is we've got nine parts out here because I've got three of them in the machine already. And the side that we machined in the bridge port, we've got facing downward. And we put a black mark on the top of the other ones. This is the saw cut side. And we want to keep that black mark oriented in the proper position while it's going through the machining cycle or we'll wind up strapping apart because we drilled the holes in the wrong place because it wasn't orient oriented correctly in the vise setup. Now it takes three operations to make this part in the machining center. So you got to move the part three times in order to get this part done. Now we've been running these all day and we've got a box pretty full, probably a good hundred in that box. We've got another hundred that we've, we've cut up and partially deburred. And I just decided to go ahead and make this video while I was doing that second batch of the second hundred and we're just running these 12 parts through the machining center. So we're gonna turn around here and look at the machine setup. This is my machining center. It's a 40 by 24 with a fourth axis rotor tape. And what we've got in here is our parts. These are our parts set up in the positions that they need to be in. We're going to start with operation number one. We set right here. We put the block in the vise facing upward. And the black mark, you can see it there, facing outward. So every part goes in just like that. Machine side here, black mark out, block facing up, so we've got the hole drilled in the right place. Then we'll take it out, move it to the second operation in the machine, which is in this second vise, and it's going to come in and machine off the top. So we're going to put the black mark up in the second operation. It'll come in, machine off the top, then It'll do what it's got to do to this part, jumps over here, works on this part, I and mean, then it's going to use all the tools at the same time while they're in there. So, yeah, we're going to tap a quarter 28 hole right here, and it's going to jump over and tap these quarter 28s, and it's going to do a tool change and come in and deburr, 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 come over here and deburr this one. So, once you brand three parts, or once you brand this thing three times through its phase, Every time you open the door, you'll be pulling out a finished part. So this part right here is technically done. And I'm going to try to load this with one hand and show you guys what we're doing. Now we get a vise handle, and I'm going to put a vise handle here first on the first vise. We're going to loosen it. And I'm going to get a second vise handle and put it on this vise. Loosen this. Now, this part is done. You can see it's completely finished. It's got the quarter 20 holes tapped in it. Let me get over here next to this wall and it'll probably focus better. Okay, so quarter 28 holes are tapped. Got two on this side. Got the hole drilled through it. And it's deburred on the top. It's deburred around the edges. The tapped holes are deburred, and there's holes all the way through. So this part is completely finished with the CNC job. So we're just going to take it and set it on the workbench. We're going to now take the second part, and we're going to flip it over just like this and slide it up against that stop. You want that deburred, or you want that burr on the bottom of the part facing inward. Alright, now we're going to take this part that's got the hole drilled in it, we're going to pick it up and flip it over here just like this, with the black line up, put that black mark up. It's a lot easier to just mark them all while you're sitting here waiting on the operation to run than it is to look at each one of them, trying to figure out which one is the black mark and which one ain't. So this is the easiest way, just put a mark on it. You want that 
bird hole facing inward, not up against this stock right here or it's going to knock it out of position. So now that you've got those both sitting in there, like they're supposed to be, you would want two hands, but I'm going to do this one with one hand. Make sure the parts are both outward, and we're going to tighten the vise. Now this is aluminum, so it doesn't have to be crazy tight. You don't have to hammer down on it, beat it with a rubber mallet. Then, we're going to come over here to the workbench and grab another part that hasn't had any operation done to it and put it in the first vise. Slide it up next to the chuck, making sure your black line is facing out. I'm going to tighten this. Not that tight, don't have to be cranked down super tight. These jaws here are soft jaws. These are aluminum jaws. We went in, we machined us a little shoulder on there so that that aluminum block can sit on there and the drill bit can pass all the way through. We couldn't use steel parallels because when the drill bit went all the way through, it would have hit the parallel and messed up the parallel set or spun them out and kicked them out both sides of the vice jaws. I've seen that happen. I've done it before, but I didn't do it on this job because I've learned from previous experiences that that won't work. And now we are ready to run this operation. I'm going to put the camera back on the tripod and close the doors on the machine and we'll run this job through. Okay guys, we've got the doors closed. We're ready to run and I will tell you that this machine uses coolant so you're not going to be able to see much this first go around. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to run these through the cycle and then I'm going to turn the coolant off and run it through again and leave all the parts in the position that they're in. Although the machining and the metal will be removed, you'll be able to see it a lot easier and understand what it's doing a lot better. And you won't be able to hear much once I start this machine. So here we go and
And there you go, fellas. The first uh, cycle time is done. So now what we do is open up the doors. We would blow everything off, open the vise. We're going to take out this third part. It's done. We're going to move the second part to the third position, the first part to the second position, and then put in a beginning of the first part. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this one more time with no coolant on the machine so that you guys can see what it's doing and I can tell you what it's doing as we're going along. We're running with the doors open. And I'll get right back to you as soon as I go in and turn off all the coolant. Okay, guys, I went into the program, made a few changes, turned the coolant off on all the operations so that now we can run it with the doors open and no coolant. We're going to run the same parts that we just ran. There's going to be no metal removed because we've got our coolant turned off. But I'll be able to maybe explain to you as it's going what it's happening and what we're doing as the operation goes along with no coolant. Now the machine runs pretty fast, so I'll try to keep up with it. But here we go, we're going to push our little cycle start button. It's going to change over to our first tool. You can see the tool changing because it's above the view of the camera. I'll move it up a couple of times. You can see the tool changers right there. center drill and what that's doing is drilling the center of all of our holes and that first tool came in and all it did was cut off the top of that one part that we didn't machine in the bridge board draw it to length that's center drilling all of our holes our next tool is drill out the big hole that's the hole that the ramrod passes through and we've got that set up to do a step tech drill. It can't go all the way through with one pass, so it goes in, comes out, goes in. Next drill is drilling our cap size hole for quarter one. The number three drill bit. And it drills to a specific depth. We we'll change out to it again. For our clearance drill. it's so fast it's waiting on the carousel. Like that. That's our quarter 28 to tap. It's going to tap that hole, reverse, come back out of the hole, move to the next one, tap it, reverse, back out, that's rigid tapping. In, out, in, out. Rigid tapping. Come up here, change tools again. Our last tool, that's a deburn tool. Now that's putting the deburn around the edge. We're going to go ahead and deburn the holes where the cap went in. Deburn the edge of that part. And jump over to the first part and deburn that hole. Nice chamber on that hole. And now those parts are done. They are ready to be switched out, and I'll go ahead and do that now. Back this camera up. I'll switch them out. Okay, I'll switch those out to the next operation. So we'll loosen this clamp vise, I should say. Loosen that vise. This first one's done. Take it out. We're going to flip this one over, we're going to take this one out, put it in with the black line up, we're going to take one that's not been touched, put it in with the black line facing to the right, take your fingers, push those out and down, tighten that up, and now we're ready to run again, 
but I can't run it just yet because I've got to go in and turn my coolant back on. So just give me a second, we'll turn that on, we'll run one more and call it quits. Okay guys, we got the coolant turned back on. There's a quick view of the control panel. That's a Mitsubishi control. That's their new M800 control. That thing is super fast, smooth. It'll do anything you want it to do on the CNC machine. And I got this machine set up with a fourth axis rotary table so I can do all kinds of round parts, whatever I'm on a machine, spirals, drill holes, whatever we want, really. This machine don't have any limits unless you get into a five axis machine. Four axis, we've got it taken care of. But anyway, I thought I'd give you a quick look at the control panel. What we're gonna do now is just gonna jump around here We'll run this part one last time. I'm just gonna reach in right here and hit this little button. That's to get it started. Now it's ready to go. It's waiting on the carousel to get into position before it can change the tool. Done. So I've got a nice little spot here on the side of the machine. Hold my vice handles. I've got an air hose. I've got a wash down hose. Everything is conveniently located. So I can blow these off. Open the vices. Take this part out because it's done. Grab another one while I'm over there. We're gonna flip this part over. We take this part out, black line up, this part in, black line out. To the right. Once you've done this a while, it comes second nature to you where you put your parts. Close the door, push a button. So while that is running, I'm gonna come over here. We 
the last thing that has to be done to these parts is when it comes out of the machine, it's got a burr on the bottom of this hole right here where the drill bit come through. So while the job's run in the next operation or the next part, I'm just going to take a little hand drill, cordless drill with a deburr tool here, and just deburr that hole, throw it in the box. That's done. Nothing fancy, just got to be deburred. Okay, so those are all done. What we're going to do now, guys, we're going to move in to the CNC lathe, and I'm going to show you how we make the little detent ball that goes inside of these blocks. 